Okay, here we go. The first subject is bad things to hear at the psychiatrist. I don't want you to think of me as a psychiatrist. I want you to think of me as a mental patient who killed the psychiatrist before you got here. <laughs> <laughs> you think you are a potato? On the couch, please. <laughs> Welcome to your first session of Freudian analysis. What seems to be the penis? <laughs> well, you say that you're paranoid, but I have a report here that says you looked very relaxed in the bath this morning. <laughs> oh, yes. I can see why you fancy your mother. She's something of a fox. <laughs> I see you've tried to commit suicide five times. Your dad was right. You are useless. <laughs> You've been coming here for six months to talk about your trust issues. Well, we've been filming you for Britain's nuttiest bastards. <laughs> yes, I think your parents caused you problems from a very early age, Clitorina. <laughs> your thoughts that you're horrifically unattractive are all in your mind, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> OK, word association. I'm going to say a word, and I want you to say the first thing that pops into your breasts. <laughs> wow, that's, that's really interesting. Do you mind if I use some of this stuff as lyrics from my band? <laughs> <laughs> you have emotional problems and a below-average IQ. I'm prescribing Hollyoaks. <laughs> Oh, that's a classic dream. It means you're a paedophile. <laughs> I want you to go to your happy place. Judging by the size of you, that's probably Greg's. <laughs> Hypnosis could certainly help with your intimacy issues. While you were unconscious, I rested my nuts on your head. <laughs> the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a TV talent show. 2007's winner Leon Jackson is still selling records in his Saturday job at HMV Paisley. Of course it's not a freak show. Now get your Siamese twin asses on that stage and you <laughs> nail Papa Don't Preach. <laughs> <laughs> Two crosses light up and the crowd cheers as Stavros Flatley are crucified in flames. <laughs> I'm 87, and I'm going to do Keep You Up With Me Boobs. Here we go. <laughs> hey. I'm like bloody Ronaldo! <laughs> Look at me go! OK, you're right. I don't really have any talent, but I'm kind of cute. I'm Kylie Minogue's sister, for God's sake! <laughs> what a hilarious singing dog Susan Boyle is. <laughs> <laughs> When you, when you said you were going to saw a woman in half, I thought you were a magician. <laughs> oh, my family aren't going to believe it when they see me on TV. They think I'm dead. <laughs> hello, I'm Susan Boyle, and I would like to say hello to my brother, Frankie. <laughs> Susan Boyle is not related to me. <laughs> None of my relatives will ever manage to chisel their way out of that cellar. <laughs> I am an escapologist. Today I have escaped from Broadmoor. <laughs> Next on ITV4, it's ITV3's coverage of ITV2's making of documentary <laughs> about the coverage on ITV4. <laughs> Hello, I'm Billy Cock, and this is my partner, Brian Balls, and together we are Billy and Brian. <laughs> Behold, my magical racist cat. They come over here, they steal our bloody jobs. <laughs> I'm not having it. <laughs> that was a beautiful song, until you fucking sang it. Things you wouldn't want to hear at work. Oh, 
Oh, you've already given Michael his dosage? <laughs> it's not a photocopy, it's a shredder. And what have you done to your arse? <laughs> <laughs> so, you probably want to know how I got the nickname Dog Botherer. <laughs> Imagine that! My first day at work, and I appear to have slipped on a wet floor. Hmm. <laughs> I think I might be entitled to compensation. <laughs> Do you mind if I leave early? I've got to pick up the kids before their parents get there. <laughs> He's the CEO, he's the COO, and I'm head of the Agricultural Division, the CIEIO. <laughs> now, I want you all to put down those football bits that you've been sewing, because I've heard that it's somebody's very special 11th birthday. <laughs> and we've got you a photo of a cake. Panchawa <laughs> ho chongwa! Panchawa ho! Don't worry, this isn't the first operation I've done. Last time I got almost the whole way round before the buzzer went off. <laughs> We've run out of semi-skim, so I've topped your coffee up with breast milk. <laughs> what do you mean it's not your turn to make the coffee? This is fucking Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Get off, your shit! <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> this air traffic control thing's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> I've always wanted to work in a library! <laughs> if only I could read! <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a property programme. Next, Cash in the Attic. Tennis player Pat Cash has a nervous breakdown <laughs> and decides to haunt his estranged family. <laughs> Today, we help Al McGrahi swap his one-bedroom cell for a Libyan place in the sun. <laughs> this couple's grand design is to turn an abattoir into an old folks home <laughs> by changing the sign. <laughs> I'm Sarah Beanie and I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Can't decide between the two properties? Well, you're an MP. Why don't you claim for them both? <laughs> Thing is, I have actually heard that in a property programme in Scotland. <laughs> And remember, the prices of property can go down as well as plummet. <laughs> you know I said those ghastly beams, what on earth are they for? It turns out they were for holding your house up. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, and I'm so posh I've actually got a swan for a penis. <laughs> Michael has always wanted to live in the country, and now he does. His business has collapsed, and he's living in a caravan in a field in Herefordshire. <laughs> Even on a collapsing market, you can still make money from a flat like this. We invited three different estate agents to come and value it, then harvested their organs. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Homes Under the Hammer, where we attack Eamon Holmes with a hammer. <laughs> Next, on location, 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 Kirsty and Phil finally go at it like dogs. <laughs> and obviously this will all be included in the day. Oh, my God, he's back early. Quick, out of garden! <laughs> <laughs> well, we've visited five properties so far, but they've all had alarms, so no joy there. <laughs> Very spacious and with wonderful views, but this flat is in Dundee, so it might as well be built out of shit. <laughs> Rejected questions from this year's exams. What colour does a Smurf go when we choke it? 
Translate the following into German. Two world wars and one world cup. Do da, do da. <laughs> How many pepper army big boys could you feed to Victoria Beckham through a tube before she became visible to the human eye? <laughs> What is the name of the force that pulls objects towards the centre of the Earth? Is it A, gravity, or B, magic? <laughs> <laughs> Katie Price is supposedly worth eight and a half million pounds and has got a thriving TV career. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> if George Michael leaves at eight o'clock for a five-mile drive, when does he crash? <laughs> There are six lines of equal length. How long will Kerry Katona be in the bathroom? <laughs> if a train is going at 70 miles per hour, how surprised would you be? <laughs> what is amnesia? Is it A, memory loss, A, memory loss, <laughs> or four, the Battle of Hastings? <laughs> If Sally buys three oranges and two apples, how far south of Scotland is she? <laughs> Discuss the idea that Willy Wonka was a paedophile. <laughs> What is amnesia? Is it A, <laughs> memory loss? Draw a diagram of the male genitalia. Please use the tracing paper provided. <laughs> what are most Canadians renowned for saying? A. Yeah. <laughs> Is standards declining? <laughs> Hitler, Pol Pot, Genghis Khan. Shag, marry or kill? <laughs> There's a wedding where Jane invites 20 guests and her partner Helen invites 40 guests. How angry is God? <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is unlikely things to hear on a TV business show. Well, the FTSE has had its best day since March. It went shopping, had lunch with friends and took in a show before shagging a complete stranger it met in a bar. <laughs> Our invention lets you know whether or not a girl fancies you. We call it beer. <laughs> OK, Dragons, I've developed a system that lets you get your own seat on the bus, and it involves talking slightly too loudly then pitting yourself! <laughs> This morning, I'm asking for half a million pounds. And with that, I will buy half a million lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Dragon. Oh, jeez, what the hell is that? That's Evan Davis, the host? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we may have lost some money promoting Michael Jackson 02, but let's face it, I've just signed a deal for the new Oasis tour. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Working Lunch, a show for people who are so good at business, they're sat at home watching the TV <laughs> in the middle of the fucking day. <laughs> Dragons, I have three words for you. Reggae, reggae condoms. <laughs> The last task was easy, and yet you cocked it up. I only asked you to blow the bloody doors up. <laughs> this week, the Dragons meet a retired Nigerian brigadier with an offer that sounds too good to be true. <laughs> Today, there was a hard drop on the footsie, and I got a bruisey on my handy wandy. <laughs> This week, the apprentices face their toughest task ever, selling the shite Sir Alan actually makes. 
Bad things to hear from a tour guide. <laughs> Please don't take photos of the natives because they believe that you're taking part of their soul. Apart from that, enjoy Norwich. <laughs> Hello, my name's Janet. I'm your holiday rep. And basically, I'll be giving out morning after pills like they were smarties. <laughs> Good morning. I'm afraid this is the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> Venice is a most historical city, famous for its. Oh shit, it's flooded. Everyone get back on the bus. <laughs> A lot of you will be wondering why there are so many wonderful foreign treasures <laughs> on display here at the British Museum. And the answer is quite simple, really. Gunbeat spear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, this castle does cater for the disabled. They bring you a sandwich while the rest of us go up the steps to look at it. <laughs> Let's have a little song, shall we? Da na now 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 <laughs> now. Coming up later on, we've got the topless donkey derby and who's got the funniest willy competition? Yes, it's going to be the best saga holiday you've ever had. <laughs> I know that a lot of you can't bear to leave Thailand, which is why I've hidden drugs randomly in your luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and as we enter the next room, we, I need you all to be very quiet because we have technically broken in. If you need anything, anything at all, <clears throat> I'll be under your bed. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look out of the window on your left, you'll see the side of the road that we should be driving on. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you have to respect local customs. On the right-hand side, you'll see a woman being bumped at the stake. <laughs> and on the left, Dundee Town Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is the deepest, darkest bit of the caves. And unless you give me £20 each, it's where you're staying. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, the East Wing was built in the year Dougie is a homo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're now leaving the green zone. Pop on your flak jackets. This is the real Baghdad. <laughs> An adult and two children is £10. But enough about my trip to Cambodia. <laughs> <laughs> Our next topic is unlikely things to hear on a breakfast show. If the woman I picked up last night is watching, help yourself to cereal, but get out of the flat by the time I get home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and now it's time for Thought for the Day. Hmm. <laughs> that was a good one. <clears throat> You're listening to Six Music. Yes, you. Just you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Travel Report. We've got a text here from Dave on the M5 who says, Ha ha ha! Every morning you leave for work, I pop round and shag your wife. <laughs> So, uh, so if you're trying to get in via Junction 2, stop it. It's against nature, and the Bible says no. <laughs> Next, we speak to Fern Breton about having her stomach stapled, this time to an enormous chocolate cake. <laughs> Uh, in other traffic news, if you're on the M11 headed towards Middlesbrough, I would turn around because it's a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! I'm doing a survey into the effects of replacing milk on your Weetabix with Red Bull! <laughs> <laughs> and we can see there's been an accident northbound on the M1, and it is a beauty! <laughs> Welcome to Radio Tourette's, you shit monkeys. <laughs> you may think of it as a breakfast show. I had mine at four bloody thirty. <laughs> Later, Vanessa Feltz will be joining me on the city, and I'll be bouncing through the fucking ceiling. <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear at a party conference. Blackpool's nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
Unlike other party leaders I could mention, I am not a slave to the auto queue. Smile, pause, applause. <laughs> Would you please welcome the man who's made the Conservatives an electable force again? Gordon Brown! <laughs> I'm going to turn my back for one minute and I want whoever stole David Blunkett's dog to put it back. <laughs> The delegates were so impressed by Ming Campbell's speech that they gave him a ten-minute standing cremation. Uh, kiss the baby. No, I'd better not. It might set my tag off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, on this issue, <clears throat> I'm with Al-Qaeda. <laughs> So, for Scottish independence and cheaper parking, vote S-N-C-P. <laughs> In an attempt to be more like Barack Obama, Gordon Brown has sensationally blacked up. <laughs> and I do believe we are the only party who are going to do anything about the amount of unemployed dwarves in this country. In fact, I saw one just outside holding a sign that said, no job, too small. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to open this BNP conference with a prayer, so if you'd all like to turn towards Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a history documentary. Now follows a documentary about the Queen Mother, which contains nudity and strong language from the start. <laughs> And it was here, at this exact spot, that faced with 30,000 baying Frenchmen, that Henry V shat himself. <laughs> <laughs> On the first day of the Battle of the Somme, over 60,000 documentaries were commissioned. <laughs> <clears throat> I was in the parachute regiment. I was dropped over occupied territory. 4,000 feet, 3,000, 2,000. I pulled the cord. <clears throat> My cagoule tightened. <laughs> <laughs> Two world wars and one world cup. <laughs> Doodah. <laughs> and it was actually here in this very tower that the princes were slaughtered. Uh, William on Red Bull and Vodka and... Fifteen forty-seven. Nostradamus predicts the rock group the Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> he also predicts a riot. <laughs> <laughs> on one side of battle stood William of Orange. On the other side, Charles of O2 and Richard of Vodafone. <laughs> The final outcome of the Second World War has changed the world forever. So, if you don't want to know the result, <laughs> get away now. <laughs> Next, Eva Braun, the inventor of the lady shave. <laughs> so it was my job to assassinate Himmler. So I stood behind the tree and waited for his car to come round the corner. And then I leapt out and I said, Boo! Sometimes all we had was the element of surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Napoleon was imprisoned in St Helena, which was extremely uncomfortable for her. Her hat was pointy, <laughs> and he never took his boots off. <laughs> <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster. Fact or fiction? Fiction. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, during the war, I was brought up in Dorset. None of us expected the surprise Japanese attack on Pool Harbour. 